Well, good evening, wherever you are tuned in and uh, welcome to uh, our late night uh, presentation. We are running the series on the Sabbath and need for uh, reform, Sabbath reforms. And uh, this is part four, where we are going to look at uh, the story of uh, Nehemiah and uh, the reforms he was able to lead out Israel in doing uh, on Sabbath reform. And so this is uh, Sammy Wilberforce with the Gospel Sounders Rekindling Reformation. And uh, before we continue in this uh, uh, nightly presentation, I'd like us to bow down. If you can kneel down, we pray together. Dear yeah, Father in heaven, before the throne, Lord, we come to just plead for your mercies. This moment that uh, you may heal us, you may make us whole once again, Lord, that uh, we may represent thee, not only in word, but uh, in character. Thank you. We pray for the feeble instrument that you are going to use for this evening lesson. Lord, your angels may be able to protect them. And thank you for the good weather. Thank you for all who shall be listening. Speak to me and through me for the glory and honor of your name to thy people in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, uh, once again, uh, I'd like just to welcome you to uh, part four of uh, a need for uh, Sabbath reform. And uh, today we are looking at uh, the story of Nehemiah. And uh, I'll quote from an article. Uh, I'll quote from an article. And this is uh, the Advent Review and the Sabbath Herald that uh, I'm going to quote from a little bit. Uh, let us look at some of these things. I'd like us to read together about this. Uh, talking about Nehemiah, uh, we are told in the days of Nehemiah, when the children of Israel had brought upon themselves humiliation and distress by their departure from God in disregarding his law, they sometimes felt that God had forgotten them. The Lord showed his rebellious people that they were dependent upon him for prosperity and safety, yet his eye was upon them. They were feeble, exposed to ravages of their enemies, yet they were the guardians of the worship of the true God and were to preserve a knowledge of his law until the Prince of Peace should come. Nehemiah was uh, God's chosen instrument to effect a reformation among his people and to deliver them from the oppression of their enemies. Their circumstances were discouraging, but Nehemiah was a man of courage and fidelity. He caused the people to be instructed in the law they had broken. Precept by precept, it was carefully explained that all might fully understand the will of God. One of the principal ways in which uh, the people had departed from God was in the discretion of the Sabbath. Heathen merchants who came to Jerusalem to sell their wares lodged outside the gates, and when they were open in the morning, offered their goods for sale. Many of the Jews traded with them on the Sabbath. This not only broke the Sabbath themselves, but tried to remove the scruples of their more conscientious countrymen. Thus, to a great extent, the sacredness of the Sabbath was uh, destroyed. And uh, we find that uh, many of the times we found ourselves doing merchandise on Sabbath, even discussing business matters and uh, talking to our friends how our business are doing and uh, inquiring how their business are doing. We are whoever talks about these things and involves these secular things in the Sabbath hours is really counted as if they were doing the very business. And so um, this is not something so new. It used to happen in the days of Nehemiah. 
and we find that it has become normal to us in our churches, even uh, the churches who are talking about reformation, you find them that um, this is the very things that uh, you will find them doing. And not only this, that people excuse themselves, oh, I was not able to buy something on the preparation day. So uh, because the Sabbath was uh, uh, meant for man and man not for the Sabbath, then we cannot die because um, of hunger or this, but we can get this and this, even buying pens to write with, the notes on the Sabbath and so on. These are the things that used to happen in Nehemiah's day. And uh, the Lord through his servants uh, was able to rebuke the children of Israel and uh, stir Nehemiah to uh, contend with these people who are bringing merchandise in the, in the uh, uh, pressing gates of the, of the, the, the temple. And so, the Jewish acknowledged that uh, their deplorable condition was the result of their transgression. And in a uh, general assembly, the Levites, as the representative of the people, confessed God's goodness in his dealings with them and their ingratitude and sins as a nation and pleaded before God. Now, therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, the terrible God who keepeth covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee that hath come upon us, on our kings, on our princes, and on our priests, and our prophets, and our fathers, and all thy people, seeing the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. Remember, when you read the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 36, these people went into captivity because of discrediting the Sabbath. And the, the land lay 70 years of Sabbath rest, and they went into Babylonian captivity. And so here are the Levites confessing their sins, for they had not served thee in their kingdom and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them, and in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them, neither turned they from their wicked works. So the Levites are confessing of the kings, the princes, and the priests, and the fathers who did not keep the law of God. Behold, we are servants this day. And uh, for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it, and it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. Having suffered punishment for their sins and um, and um, Acknowledge the justice of God in dealing with them. They covenanted to obey, obey his law and that it might be a sure covenant and preserved in a permanent form. It was written out and the priests, levites, and princes sealed unto it. They had a clear knowledge of the claims of God or for the character of sin with those had real uh, principle to see and understand was to act. And so uh, what we need in such a day as these are um, the Nehemiahs of today who will contend with all these businesses going on in the temple of the Lord and uh, withholds the blessing of the Lord being in our midst. It's time for uh, the whole of Christian world to search the scriptures for themselves and uh, do not rely on the pulpit or um, take an example of what people are doing, but um, ask yourself, Whatever I'm doing on the Sabbath, is it according to the will of God or uh, am I copying and patterning after the word? There is uh, a very great need of Sabbath reform among us who profess to observe God's holy rest day. And so these discussions of businesses, these plans on Sabbath, these uh, 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 controversies and uh, uh, talking about secular things, and you, you find that politics these days occupy a large measure of uh, not only our talks in the break, but also in the pulpit when the sermons are going on. You hear people uh, uh, um, uh, name tagging this and name tagging that politician. We cannot allow men to be employed in any way in 
secular activities that uh, will um, lower the sanctity of the day. And so the watchmen on Zion's wall, they have to awake as even Nehemiah uh, awoke and be able to make sure that um, um, the, the sanctity of the Sabbath is uh, being led by example because we cannot enforce religion. Force is the last resort of every false religion. But also in as much as God has given us discipline, order, and organization, among us ourselves, we should uh, uh, use it not by force, but uh, uh, to bind whatever can be bound on earth. For Christ tells his disciples that whatever thing that they bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, if it is uh, uh, according to the law of God. Um, uh, we, we hear that the Lord has a controversy with his professed people. And uh, in this controversy, men in responsible uh, position will take a course directly opposite to that pursuit of Nehemiah. Uh, and uh, let us read this and see what uh, the Lord is telling us. Uh, this is uh, from uh, this is from uh, uh, Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, March 18, 1884. So the Lord says, um, He says uh, that um, yeah. The Lord has a controversy with his, his professed people in this last day. In this controversy, men in responsible position will take a course directly opposite to that pursued by Nehemiah. They will allow everything to run on the Sabbath, which has nothing to do with the sacredness of the Sabbath. They will not only ignore and despise the Sabbath themselves, but they will try to keep it from others by burying it beneath the rubbish of custom and tradition. In churches and in large gatherings in the open air, ministers will urge upon the people the necessity of keeping the first day of the week. There are calamities on sea and land, and these calamities will increase, one disaster following close upon another. And uh, the little band of conscientious Sabbath keepers will be pointed out as the ones who are bringing the wrath of God upon the world by their disregard of Sunday. Continued on, Satan urges this falsehood that he may take the world captive. It is his plan to compel men to accept errors. He takes an active part in the promulgation of all false religions and uh, will stop at nothing in his efforts to enforce erroneous doctrines. Under a cloak of religious zeal, men influenced by his spirit have invented the most cruel tortures of their fellow men and have inflicted the most awful sufferings upon them. Satan and his agents have the same spirit still, and the history of the past will be repeated in our day. Again, we are told there are um, men who have set their minds and will to accomplish the evil. In the dark recesses of their hearts, they have resolved what crimes they will commit. These men are self-deceived. They have rejected God's great rule of right and instead have erected a standard of their own and comparing themselves with this standard, they pronounce themselves holy. The Lord will permit them to reveal what is in their hearts to act out the spirit of the master that controls them. He will let them show their hatred of his law in their treatment of those who are loyal to its requirements. They will be accentuated by the same spirit of religious frenzy that guarded on the mob that crucified Christ. Church and state will be united in the same corrupt harmony. And uh, we only think of... Uh, the people who will uh, move from Sabbath keeping to Sunday and then persecute uh, fellow brethren. But uh, this is not only restricted to that. We find that even uh, those who shall be keeping the Sabbath, they'll have their own form of keeping the Sabbath. And those who will want to do reformation like Nehemiah did, they'll be persecuted. They will be called heretics. They'll be called offshoots. And um, they'll find no place amidst the brethren who are opposers of the present truth. Now, one thing is that um, men like to exalt themselves and what they are doing. Rather than comparing themselves with Christ, they compare each one to another and think that uh, they have reached a state of righteousness 
which others have to emulate rather than others looking unto Jesus Christ. In our keeping of the Sabbath, in our obedience to the law of God, we don't have to look at the standard that men have set and where they have reached. Christ is our standard, and uh, whatever he bids us to do on the Sabbath is what we should do and not what men think that uh, should be done. And so reformers are uh, a people who should not be filled with the spirit of controversy, but a spirit of uh, humility, a spirit to yield to their, to their heavenly father. And so uh, they, they should be moved by the spirit of Nehemiah. And uh, continuing about the spirit of Nehemiah, we thus continue to read that um, when Nehemiah moved out as a reformer and deliverer in Israel, he was actuated by the love to by love to God and anxiety for the prosperity of his people. Reformers should not be selfish while even teaching Sabbath reform and other reforms that have to be done amongst the people. They should seek Jesus Christ. They should pray more because uh, there is no way sinners are going to be uh, uh, won to Christ if it is not by love. The issue of compulsion, the issue of force cannot ever win a sinner who is steeped in sin and Satan has uh, really hardened their heart. And so we should have the spirit of Nehemiah, we are told. He was actuated by the love to God and anxiety for the prosperity of his people, not himself to be seen that he was doing reformation, but Christ that God may be exalted and the people may share in the blessings of the Sabbath and other reformation that uh, he was uh, getting involved in. His heart was in the work he had undertaken. His hope, his energy, his enthusiasm, his determination of character were contagious and inspired others with the same courage and lofty purpose. Each man became an Nehemiah in his own sphere and helped to make stronger the hand and heart of his neighbor. And soon feebleness was succeeded by strength and courage. And that is the spirit that we need to move while we are talking about Sabbath reform. Other than hurling insults and um, um, condem uh, 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 condemna uh, condemning others, I mean, we should be a people who sigh and cry for the deliverance of the people rather than to condemn them. Here is a lesson for ministers and others who are laboring for the salvation of souls. Those who believe that we have the truth, that God has made us the depositories of his law, should manifest the same earnestness and zeal that characterize Nehemiah. If ministers are inactive and irresolute, destitute of godly zeal, what can be expected of those to whom they minister? In some instances, they may rise above the moral level of their teachers, but not often. But when ministers broaden their plans and show that they are in earnest, the people will respond to their efforts and disunited, dispirited workers will become united, strong, hopeful, and eager. It is a sin to be heedless, purposeless, and indifferent in any work in which we may engage, but especially in the work of God. Every enterprise connected with his cause should be carried forward with order, forethought, and honest prayer. Faithful standard bearers for God and his truth are wanted, and many are ready to respond to the call. As these see the iniquity and violence that exist in consequence of making void the law of God, they will see greater reason than ever to reverend that law and will greatly prize its righteous restraining influences. Contempt and reviling increases their love for the precepts of Jehovah. With David, they'll say, it is time for the Lord to work, for they have made void thy, made void thy law. Therefore, I love the commandments uh, above gold, yeah, above fine gold. And so um, Nehemiah rose to be counted upon in the days when reformation was needed. And the Lord is uh, asking, where are the watchmen on Zion's wall? And so uh, with leaflets and uh, commitment to Christ, we should arise with a renewed zeal in uh, proclaiming the love of God to the erring ones and peradventure inducing them to come to the point where they will see the matchless charms of Jesus Christ who have died for them and procured righteousness for them. And uh, 
we are admonished we should cease to tread the Sabbath underfoot and keep the, Lord, the, the Lord's day holy. All affairs on this day are to honor God and not to honor ourselves. And if you honor God, he says, those who honor me, I'll honor them. This is what the Lord tells us. And so um, let us look at um, uh, the blessings of the Sabbath and whom did the Lord give the Sabbath and for what purpose and all uh, uh, this. And uh, I think uh, the Bible can be the best guide for us in this. To whom was the Sabbath day given and for what purpose then? It was given to Adam and Eve at creation in Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. The Lord, after creating everything, he rested and sanctified and gave an example to our first parents. Uh, it was made a command to remember in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. Uh, before sin, it was a commemoration of recreation. But after sin, uh, it is um, a commemoration of recreation. Uh, after being plunged in sin, God sent his son that uh, he may be a propitiation for us. And then uh, every time we read the Sabbath, we remember that the first week it is God who created and everything is perfect. And so as we come into the Sabbath, a sinful people who have been forgiven and uh, given the robe of righteousness by Jesus Christ, we remember that he is recreating us and uh, fulfilling the first purpose that God had that man should be in his likeness. He, Christ, uh, made the Sabbath. By him, it was set apart as a memorial of the work of creation. It points to him as both the creator and sanctifier. So he created, we fell into sin, and then he is in the work of recreation. You can look in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 14, Hebrews chapter 1 uh, and 1, Genesis 2, 1 to 3, that he is the creator and he is at the same time the sanctifier. Also, God saw that a Sabbath was essential for man, even in, the, in paradise. He needed to lay aside his own interest and pursuit for one day of the seven, that he might more fully contemplate the works of God and meditate upon his power and goodness. He needed a Sabbath to remind him more vividly of God to awaken gratitude because all that he enjoyed and possessed came from the beneficent or beneficent hand of the creator. This is part X and Prophets, page 48. In uh, Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 137, the Lord draws very nigh to his people on the day that he has blessed and sanctified. He, God, gives it to man as a day in which he may rest from labor and devote himself to worship and the improvement of his spiritual condition. Testimonies to the Church, volume 4, page 249. As uh, we just wrap up this in uh, reformation that Nehemiah carried forth and why we are given this Sabbath, we are told following the example of the creator, man was to rest upon this sacred day that as he should look upon the heavens and the earth, he might reflect upon God's great work of creation and that as he should behold the evidences of God's wisdom and goodness, his heart might be filled with love and reverence for his maker. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 47. And so um, again, in observance was to be an act, it is observance was to be an act of um, grateful acknowledgement on the part of all who should dwell upon the earth that God was their creator and their rightful sovereign, that they were the work of his hands and the subjects of his authority. Thus, their institution was holy, commemorative, and given to all mankind. There was nothing in each, in each shadowy or restricted application to any people. Patriots and Prophets, page 48. In Isaiah chapter 66, 22 and 23, we are told, finally, in the new earth, every race and nation will keep the Sabbath. And uh, they will not do it as a coercion. They will do it as something delightful to do it and to commemorate, commemorate the redemption plan. If the true Sabbath had always been remembered and kept holy, what do you think would have been the result? We are told in the Great Controversy, page 438, so long as the fact, so long as the fact that He God is our creator continues to be a reason why we should worship Him, so long the Sabbath will continue as it is sign and memorial, 
Had the Sabbath been universally kept, man's thoughts and affection would have been led to the creator as the object of reverence and worship, and there will never have been an idolater, an atheist, or an infidel. The keeping of the Sabbath is a sign of loyalty to the true God. And so here are the blessings of the Sabbath that time. Um, those who keep it, if it could have been kept, there could have been no idolater, there could have been no an atheist. What we need is the love of Christ in this day and the spirit of Nehemiah so that we may bring people out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. And I pray that um, we will lead out by an example. We will not uh, invite people to come to the Sabbath and then we ourselves uh, uh, we we are the discretors of the Sabbath. Uh, and, and so I'm praying that uh, the, the Lord may have mercy upon us once again as we look into proclaiming the seal of God versus the mark of the beast. Uh, have we come to a point that the love of Christ has been cultivated in our hearts so that the Sabbath is a delight because it sanctifies us, it makes us whole again and not some day that uh, we come in and we feel that there are so many restrictions, our businesses are closed, we cannot discuss anything worldly. Uh, are we feeling these restrictions? Are, are, or are we feeling the power of sanctification and uh, recreation and redemption? I pray that um, if we will sound the loud cry, then we have to be filled with the joy of the Lord of the Sabbath in our hearts, and then the Sabbath will be delightful. And then we shall guide the people to the Lord of the Sabbath. And if we succeed in guiding them to the Lord of the Sabbath, then we shall succeed in leading them to be obedient to the law of God, even the Sabbath. And so may the Lord bless us as we continue in this series, that we may think of uh, how we have been stumbling blocks, not only to the people outside, but even to our own families, the way we behave on Sabbath, the business talk we engage in, the, the way we do our things as if it was a common day. This has made the Gentiles blaspheme God because we profess the things that uh, we don't practice in our lives. And so I pray that uh, the Lord will give us the strength to be able to practice that which we, uh, uh, we profess. And so God bless you. And uh, until uh, next late night presentation when we shall be looking at uh, how the Sabbath is the seal of God and uh, how it is actually the spirit sealing us. If we do not have the spirit of the Sabbath, then we can come to the Sabbath on the right day, but then have a very false worship all throughout the Sabbath. And so may the Lord bless us until then and uh, let us close with a word uh, of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, you are calling watchmen on Zion's wall to be able to represent Christ on earth here. Father, we not want to have a religion of forms, a religion of routines and uh, traditions, but we want to have a fellowship with thee that even, Lord, the way we enjoy the other commandments working in them, we shall enjoy even the fourth commandment working in it. And so, fill our hearts with the love of Christ that uh, we may forget about ourselves and uh, we may think of him who has redeemed us and the Sabbath as a sign of sanctification and recreation. Your grace continue to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. God bless you. Until tomorrow. Bye for now.